Hey all, um, I added optical simulations to the uh, laser scanner, so I wanted to share you uh, how that is done and how it works. So the, the module at, at, at the moment um, yeah, is, is not, not good enough to, to bring in uh, production. Um, th there are some questions, so for instance, um, you see that the, uh, the photodiode is put in position by springs. You can't see the springs, but they are here underneath, uh, underneath this board. And, and that is done because I was not really sure where the laser would hit the photodiode. Okay. Now let, let's first see how, how these rays are drawn. So now I will remove uh, the rays or the simulation. And I made an, optic, an extra workbench which only works for, for my uh, design. And in this workbench you can rid, uh, run a function called draw rays, which sort of uses the object as a digital twin and starts to calculate the optical properties. Okay, so it's finished running. So what does it draw? You see here that it draws the focal point. So this is the position of the, the focal point. And the lens is, or the laser is in focus between these two lines. And I will come later at how you calculate that. This is the line of the laser when the prism is not tilted. So these are the edges of the scan line. And these are the edges within where the, the photodiode is hit. So here you see how it hits the photodiode. So these are the two most extreme rays and uh, it hits the photodiode there. So, so it's not optimal. Um, yeah, and you can see also where it hits on the mirror. So obviously in future designs of this box, I will try to optimize that. Um, and actually the cylinder lenses are now moved by spring, but they could be, yeah, they, they are so tolerant that you should be able to just put them in place directly and not have these springs. Okay, but now let's dive a bit deeper in how this, this works. So as you see, I have a design and in, these, in, the, in this design, I, I have a model and you see uh, components like uh, this, um, like the prism. And what the algorithm does is it looks at this prism grabs its center, and then translates that coordinate to PyOp tools. Okay, so on the back end, on the back end, I, uh, I have PyOp tools, which is made by a group of engineers from Colombia. And I can, I simply translate my coordinates to PyOp tools. So that's why I wrote a script for that. And there, um, yeah, I can do the simulation. So you see there are some limitations. For instance, cylinder lenses don't have sides, but, but that's not an issue for me at the moment. I want to talk about the scan line size. Um, how is this determined? And to do that, let's recap some important points about uh, prism scanning. So prisms have lower cross scan aberrations than rotating mirrors. So you're mirror facets or prism facets, they have manufacturing errors. And with prisms, that gives lower cross-scan errors. Uh, and that, there is a proof of this in the code, but um, I will not go deeper into that than this. What you also have is you have orthogonal incidence. So if you tilt your prism, so here you have a laser bundle coming in, you have a tilted prism, it will hit the substrate at 90 degrees uh, at the same angle. And you can do this without an F-data lens. So typically you see rotating mirrors coming in combination with F-data lenses. Um, and, and that gives you the desired problem, properties of uh, orthogonal in the incidence. And with prisms, that is not needed. What is the case with prisms is that the scan speed is not uniform. So it's very slightly, say 10%. Um, and that is one of the criteria I use to determine the scan line with. I say, okay, I want the scan speed only to, to vary with 10%. Another criteria you can use is you can say, okay, if the prism is tilted, the spot gets slightly distorted. And you can say, okay, that, that, that is not a problem, but I want the scan line to be so wide that uh, 93% of all the energy still ends up in the spot. Okay, so now 
let's see how that's implemented in the code. So let's say um, we want to compute the maximum recommended angle. And we say the straddle ratio has to be 70% and the minimum energy I require is 10%. We can then run analytical.py and then you see that um, it recommends a line length of 15.8 millimeters and we have a duty cycle um, of 80%, which is very high. Um, and the exposure is straddle limited. So, so that is what's limiting us from, from creating an even wider scanning angle. Um, and the, yeah, and at the center, uh, so we have 60% of the speed of the edges of the scan line. So, so we would have to compensate for that with the laser diode, uh, with pulsing the laser diode, but we could make uh, much longer scan lines than you saw in the video earlier where you used five millimeters. Okay, so as I'm not willing to, um, yeah, to, to simply change that at the moment, I say, okay, let's say I want to have 90% or 80% uh, of my energy in my scan line. Um, and I then do the computation. Yeah, and then we see that the exposure is power limited and we have a scan line of 10 millimeters. So it's five millimeters shorter and we have 80% of the speed at the edges uh, of, at the center. Uh, so, so, so that is how you can determine, okay, what if I have this uh, f uh, final spot size, what kind of prism dimensions do I have and how do I compute the scan line? What's also important to, to know is that at the moment we discuss prisms which are like say uh, 30 millimeter in dimension. Of course, you could also look at much, much smaller prisms, say three millimeters in dimensions and rotate them with an optical field. Um, uh, so, so you can do all sorts of crazy stuff, but, but that is not um, in the budget uh, I have at the moment. Okay, and then if you look into this uh, repository, you see some, some older code uh, so, so then there is not some, something finally, so I've been talking about the straddle ratio and that I computed with relations from, uh, from y end, and you can see the analytical calculations also here. Huh? So you see all this, uh, this code, which, which does the actual uh, calculation. And you might be like, yeah, uh, is, this, is this correct? Um, because yeah, that could not be correct. Um, and then I have a proof for that. So I actually created a, a test for it. So what you can do is you can run uh, RayUp, which has been uh, created by uh, Dr. Jordan. And I think he later uh, worked on uh, even on my gen, which I used uh, uh, for the FPGA. Um, and you can calculate using his tool bench, you can calculate, okay, what would be the, um, uh, the, the, um, the aberrations with his script and you calculate it with the analytical strip based on the y end for several tilt angles and you see that that agrees quite well um, and let's let's do one example say we're going to do uh, 30 uh, degrees okay so we're going to navigate to the old code and we're going to do the analytical calculation and we say okay we have 30 degrees so, and then we end up with a lambda RMS of say 0 0.5. And if we look at the readme, uh, we see that, okay, that is 0 0.5 in the analytical. We can also do it for the simulation. So, and then we again enter the angle, which is 30 degrees. And then again, we end up with a lambda RMS of 0 0.54. So they are, they are in good agreement. Um, and this is used as proof, okay, so the relation we have, that, that is actually working. And as you can see, the simulation is, is very different uh, in code. Okay, so that, that concludes the optical properties. I hope you, um, you understand how, um, how that works or have a starting point. Thank you for your time. See you next time.